celebrations today after Governor Dana Malloy signed a bill into law that requires foods that are genetically engineered to be labeled as so. And joining us now to talk all about this landmark legislation is State Representative Tony Huang. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. So you're very excited. You were instrumental in getting this bill passed. A lot of people supported you. There was some opposition. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But why was it so important for you? Well, I think the key is we were at a significant tipping point in having this legislation be impacted in our lifestyles. But it is important for me because the fact that, you know, I'm a pizza and burger type of person, <laughs> and I think people identify the GMO labeling movement and the organics mm -hmm. and, the, and the healthy food dynamics. For me, it's a fundamental right to know what we put into what our food system. Right. The, the, the idea that if I want to know and make that decision, not to say whether GMOs are good or bad, but the simple fact is I have a fundamental right to know. Just let the consumer know. Absolutely. Right, and which is basically having it put on the label. Yes. All right, now this law has passed, but it's not in effect just yet, correct? Well, there are trigger provisions. Right. And when I Explain talk about those. the tipping point is the fact the trigger provision would, would dictate that for the law to be implemented, there are surrounding states mm -hmm. that would have to approve it with some population parameters as well. But the good thing about it, as I mentioned earlier, the tipping point is, is easing toward our way mm -hmm. because Maine has already approved it. New York is considering the law. Vermont is considering the law. But obviously, there's going to be tremendous challenges because there's going to be pending lawsuits. There are copyright issues. There's always the science debate. Uh, but I believe when you talk about a person's choice and the real grassroot mandate of this issue, uh, I think it's, it's an exciting time to be in that movement. Now, certainly you believe that with the passage of this law, people are able to make smarter choices about what they're buying, what they're eating. Talk a little bit about the opposition, because, you know, it is important to mention Absolutely. that as well. I think one of the biggest questions has been the scientifics of it. But, but what led me to ask for the labeling is, is the simple reason. In this country that prides itself in such academic research excellence, there are virtually very little independent academic research on this issue. It's predominantly been the purview of the government to approve this, which raises a question in regards to the academic independence of this. But the second point that's been brought up numerous times is the economics. Right, the we cost of it, the cost, the cost of the labeling. Of and the labeling, but here's the reality. We label trans fat, sure. we label peanut content. But the other part that's really interesting is the fact that there are European countries and third world countries and China, mm -hmm. which has a, ban a GMO already. ban. Exactly. And when you have multinational consumer packaged goods companies like the Nestle's and the Crafts that are actually making that product mm -hmm. and they're not going bankrupt, they're creating economic efficiencies. I think that's a issue when I talk about tipping point, I use that word often is the fact that let the consumer decide, let mm -hmm. the marketplace decide. Yeah, I think a lot of people would say sort of what you mentioned, so many other countries already have a ban on GMOs. Why is it that it took so much to get this law into place here in Connecticut? Well, I think having an opportunity to share this with a broader audience and not create a, 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 a fight in regards to right versus wrong. Mm -hmm. I think it's the fact that we need to educate people that this is part of our process, that virtually 90% of our food supply in this country does have traces of GMO. The fact is, we're not going to say it's good or bad, but simply the fact, let the consumer decide. Right. Let the consumer decide. And it's a very powerful testimonial, because when we debated this bill, and we are the first in the country to pass this, is the fact that we had over 45,000 emails into the governor and the legislative offices. This is really the grassroots showing that people can make a difference in, in laws that impact them. And they want to know, they just want to be informed. Absolutely. Right. Well, let's talk about what's next. You said Maine passed a similar law, but we are still waiting for other states to pass the laws before it can take effect on the labels here in Connecticut, right? Yes. So who do you think will be first? Well, I, I think Vermont is very close. Vermont. And when I, you say how close, what do you think? Well, I think they're debating the bill. The bill is going through the various processes. Uh, New York is actually having public debate on this in February 4th. But I think the reality is the fact that we need to have more grassroots engagement. Mm -hmm. and, and having an opportunity to speak on your program and having people understand that they can have ownership in their government. It's, it's, it's a fascinating exercise for me as a legislator, but the fact is, this was a bill that was really promulgated and pressured by people saying, you know what, 
we I want have, to. I have a right to know. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been a powerful grassroots political process. So I think for us in the various states, we need to generate that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of engagement in saying, if you really care, let your legislators know. And Tony, for people watching right now, they want to get a little bit more information, find out what they can do, get a little bit more information on the issue. What's the best place well, to Well, the go? best place is the use of social media as well as website. Uh, GMO Free CT is really the grassroots um, informational resource and and they will have linkages to the various other state organizations that are engaged in this but truly it's 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 really getting to know your neighbors and, and as I said to the advocates mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier I'm not your typical you know organic GMO labeling advocate because of my dietary habits but I said to him I said the people that are passionate about this you need to tell 10 other people who may not necessarily know or really care to have them understand that this is a due process issue and that it is a health issue mm -hmm. for, your, for your own being. All right, Representative Wong, thanks so much for being on the show. We thanks, appreciate Andy. your time.